Go for it. Freaking what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's going to be called History is Nice. History is Nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your host, Strider Wilson. Dude, we got Aaron on the sticks, dude. What up, Aaron? What up? Dude, I'm just chilling right now. Actually, I shouldn't say I'm chilling, dude. I'm a little toasty, but I'm still wearing my jeans because I've come, I've come to a realization that I've come to a point in my life where I don't think I can wear shorts out in public. I think I have a creepy, I have a very, I have a frame that might, that's lanky, but it might be described as gaunt. Gaunt is a scary um, body type to have. I don't know. I, I don't, I feel like gaunt is like unhealthily thin and I don't think you're that. Dude, thank you. But do you think I can get away with wearing shorts in public? Yeah. You think so? Totally. Like n- not exercising. Like, can I wear? You are exercising, though. Why am I? Why am I? Why would I entertain a theory that that has no merit? But here's the thing. No, no. I mean, while exercising, it's cool. But no. like, if I'm not exercising, like, am I allowed to be wearing shorts, or is it like, like, I'm, I'm like the only profession. Like, if you're a postman, yeah, okay, you can wear some shorts. You know, if you're like an archaeologist, like discovering bones, then like, yeah, you might be out in the field, put some shorts on. You're in the desert or whatever. Other than that, it's like well, you can't. You have to wear pants. You can't wear it on stage. But I think here, yeah, you studio, can. I'm never going to judge you. I appreciate. I'm going to be in shorts. I get warm. I love when you're wearing shorts. It actually fires me up. Like I love to wear wear board shorts. Do you think I can wear board shorts around, or is that too low key? Might be a little too low key. That's what I think. No one's gonna respect me. Like if I have a business meeting and I show up in board shorts, like that might be a, try to be like a power move. But really, it's like I'm just starting to have a laid back vibe. Yeah, yeah. But also, I have I have little skinny calves. I, have, I feel shame by them, like my little skinny dick. That is a shame. I, I have, know. I have great calves. Sorry. You yeah. And I'm trying to do calf raises. I'm trying to do bear crawls, but it's genetic. It's unfortunate. It's the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, this actually kind of leads sort of what we're talking about today because I had this shorts epiphany, which I think I'm glad we had this conversation. Now I'm going to, I am going to go take my shorts out of the trash when I get back home. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sick pair of O'Neal gray shorts that I need to take out of the trash. But um, it made me think of archaeologists, dude. And I, when I think of archaeology, I automatically think of Indiana Jones, which is sick. Hell yeah. Then after I'm done thinking about that, which is tight and probably rewatch the last crusade, which is my favorite one, which is your favorite one, Aaron? Is it Last Crusade? Um, they're they're so neck and neck, Raiders and, and Last Crusade, yeah. Yeah, Temple of Doom, different, more car- cartoonish vibe. And it's like a prequel. Yeah, it is. But still fun. You know, you have the heart ripping, which is really cool. Kalima. Um, yeah, Kalima. <laughs> Great scene. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Raiders and, and Last Crusade are just so sick. Um, also, you know, if I could... Do you think if, like, I, I wanted to talk about this, like... I mean, secondary archaeologist, uh, you got to go Brendan Fraser. Great call. The yeah, mummy. Yeah. And Aaron, literally, it's like you're inside my head because that's what took me to today's topic, which is ancient Egyptian art, dude, which where is Brendan Fraser in the mummy? He is in Egypt, dude. Mm-hmm. And he's dealing with Imhotep, bro, who we've covered on this pod. And it gets me fired up in, like, I, like, look at Egypt stuff. Like, I think I understand, like, kind of, like ancient Greece a little more than ancient Egypt because there's so much risk history with Egypt. And one of the great ways when you're trying to understand a new area of history or a culture or something is checking out the art. What are the people saying? Or what is the state or religious order having the artists say on behalf of them or the people, which is interesting in Egypt's case. So we're going to be diving into that, exploring a few um, significant pieces. But before we do that, I want to just give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, which is Upstart. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Don't wait. Check your rate today at upstart.com slash dank. Loan amounts may vary. Go to upstart.com slash dank. You know, I get fired up on finance, so I'm fired up to have Upstart sponsoring today. Um, so 
I figured the way the best way to do this is sort of get into a few significant works of ancient Egyptian art. And, you know, I would love to see some stuff that was done, you know, indie style stuff, some avant-garde stuff. And we're kind of going to touch on that in a way. Um, but a lot of what we have in ancient Egypt and a lot of what we find in your thinking art. And I chose to go down a route that doesn't tackle like the pyramids at Giza or the um, temple complex at um, Sarak, which I'm probably saying wrong. Uh, but you had or like the big Sphinx. Um, or like the Ramsey statues, like you have these gigantic sculptures, which are works of art. Um, I want to go a little smaller and, and check out stuff that you might find in one of those temples or uh, a, a, something that's a little more, you might go see in a museum or something like that, rather than having to go there, it might come to you in an exhibit, um, which would be pretty sick. So um, not that I'm saying that those giant structures like the, the pyramids of Giza are ancient wonders of the world, they're freaking sure. gnarly. They're hugely significant um, for all of humanity, and let alone Egypt. So um, maybe even fucking aliens, dude, if you're going to go that route. Um, how, how do you feel about ancient aliens, Aaron? I mean, I did like the movie Stargate. Great movie. Oh, it fires me up so hard. My boy Spader, dude. My boy Kurt Russell. Let's go, dude. Yeah. French Stewart. French Stewart, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> French Stewart's kind of badass Hansu. in it, actually. Yeah, Jaimon yeah, Jai Jai Hansu's one of the dudes. Yeah, he's one of the... The guys that comes down, they're one of the gods. Yeah. Who are just like aliens from a different planet. I remember that movie scared me when I was younger, dude. So good, dude. Great sound. Oh. The guy from The Crying Game, isn't it? Is he... Which guy is the guy? Is he the dude from... Who's like the ruler of the... Uh, yeah, people yeah he's, of the, the, he's the main god-like guy, yeah. Yep. Who's like androgynous, like kind of sexy, but in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, that's the crying Sexy game. in a way that uh, Orange County dads wouldn't approve of. Entirely, yeah. Yes. But sexy nonetheless. But also has like a harem of young boys, and it's a little bit strange. So that, that part, iffy. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely not uh, acceptable on this planet. <laughs> you know, you go through the Stargate, different rules, I guess. Um, all right, so let's check out some art here. I chose this first piece, 31st century BC, so we're going way back. Narmer's palate. And we're not talking about what he's eating. Aaron has an image here, so yes, I'd like to mention once again, um, if you're listening, I'm going to do a great job of painting word pictures for you. However, if you want to check out the YouTube, you can follow along visually as well, which is pretty freaking sick. And you can judge for yourself whether I have a gaunt frame or not. Um, what we're looking here is a dark green skizzit stone, which um, sounds like something that, you know, you would smoke out of in college. Um, but it's carved into a shield-shaped ceremonial palette. And you know this is ceremonial and not quite functional because it has, uh, right here, it's just one palette, but the image is of both sides. So that's what indicates that it's ceremonial so that it would be, you know, presented in the center of something and people would be able to observe it from all around. Whereas if it, if it was like a, a palette or shield is basically what you're looking at, one side wouldn't have the art. It'd only be the side that's, you know, not functioning and being held or something like that or placed on a wall. This I just, is, I mean, I just realized 31st century BC, like that's 30,000 years ago. Dude, isn't that amazing? <laughs> and dude, isn't it crazy to think like there's a human that made this that long ago who was that fucking skilled, bro. He was so good at his craft. Like yeah. you're seeing a legit bird. You're seeing, you're seeing, you know, yeah, rec Jaguars. A lot of jacks, yeah. Yeah, very recognized. And all have religious meaning and everything. Um, what's big for this is it's supposedly um, a depiction of the unification of Egypt um, by this king um, who they would call like Narmer, who, uh -oh, who unified Upper and Lower Egypt. And now this is what I love about this piece. I didn't even know there was an Upper and Lower Egypt. I always thought it was unified. Didn't know that it had to be brought together. But upon further research King Narmer this is a, a uh, uh, you're, we're seeing like his battle he's a victory in a battle and, a, and he's getting approval from the gods above in Egypt you have uh, animal gods you know Osiris would be the biggest one that we know about there's uh, you know Amun-Ra Akhenaten um, uh, or no Akhenaten's a, a pharaoh we're going to get in, into him in a little bit but uh, um, Horus yeah Horus Isis I, I, Aaron Beast, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And they all are represented by different um, 
figurines and animals and sometimes um what do they call that when like they blend the two animals there's a term for it but i forget what it is um like a griffin would be an example part Mm -hmm. lion part um fucking like eagle but here you have like you know basically jaguars with long ass necks you've got (laughs) fucking sick ass like crows crows have legit symbolism dude um means change you have bulls which are legit bulls play a heavy role in like greek and um egyptian culture and there's a blend of greek and egyptian culture later on cleopatra is actually a descendant of tomli who was a greek general of alexander the great who conquered egypt so technically cleopatra while ruling egypt is of greek ancestry she was not an actual egyptian um by blood and that's how they get away with casting white people to play her. yeah ex- there you go exactly <laughs> so any people who are like it's not what well, apologies for that you know i guess in this case that strange case you would have a um or that unique case you would have a, an argument so but you have king um narmer here but really you the unifying pharaoh of the rulers of egypt um there's this dude called, and I'm going to say this wrong, Aaron. I'll bet. Um, Kase Kahemwe. Okay. Uh, he's the strong candidate for the honor of first king to unify the, the country. Um, he had a prosperous reign. He was the son to another person you've heard of, maybe Dozier, who's also the ghost, I think, from... Uh, is that the name of the ghost from Ghostbusters? Uh, Dozer. Dozer, yeah. right? D-J-O-S-E-R. Gozer, sorry, Gozer. Oh, yeah, it's Gozer. This is Dozer with a D. Um, he built the step pyramids at Saqqara. Imhotep designed those, by the way, Beast. And, Dozer's um, one of the guys on the ship in uh, The Matrix. Yeah. Tank and Dozer. Tank and brothers. Dozer, hell yeah. Natural born. But I always imagined it was Tank and Dozer was short for like Bulldozer because both those mm-hmm. guys were pretty jacked. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but what we have to take away from Narmer's palette is that... Egypt did have to be unified. Um, um, it's you would also have this like these pharaohs called Menes, who are like is like a common name. Like you know, there's like a million Benedicts. There was like a group of pharaohs called Menes, and they think that that was probably Narmer. He could have been one of them. Um, and also, once Egypt was unified, like it would have had to have been sort of reunified quite a bit like there would be civil war like even look at today what's going on and like Putin saying oh he wants to unify the old Soviet Union he wants to take back Ukraine what if he even tries to do that there's will be battles going on continuously right and the victors write the history so who knows if the south or north wanted to be part of that and um you know it's probably a battle for resources and control obviously um back in nowadays and in Egyptian times. So th- these lessons that we can look back on are still taking place today on a larger and crazy scale. And um, but relating it back to freaking Narmer's palette is though this is might be King Menes or um, whoever it's attributed to um, freaking or Dozier, all of these guys would have had to have fought battles, won battles that were civil wars, even if it was like, quote, unified, Egypt was, quote, unified or not. So um, pretty freaking sick. It's probably easier to control the Nile if it's one country, you know, versus oh, if it was broken half. Totally. Someone could put up like a, um, what's that called? They could build a dam, yeah. divert waters. Totally. Probably you would imagine, or the Nile is actually the weird river that floats, flows south to north, doesn't it? Like the only river in the world. Oh, sorry. I'm not even thinking. I'm thinking of the 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 Red Sea, not even the Nile. Mm. Yeah, the Red Sea is right around there because Moses freaking when he freaking also, laid yeah, the himself. Nile too. It totally would be the Nile as well. Like that, those waterways would both be very important, hugely important, hugely important. Because there's no canal to the Mediterranean at that point. Certainly. No, Suez was not. Yeah. Um, remember when the Suez Canal got blocked somewhat recently? And then it came out in an article. They were like, that was a woman captain. (laughs) People were like (laughs) mad about that. Amazing, dude. Um, Okay. I mentioned the pyramids at Giza. So what we have that was found within the pyramid structure at Giza is something called Khufu's statue, 26th century BC. 
You look at this thing, dude. It's tiny, bro. It's tiny. It's only 7.5 centimeters. That's three inches. This, I've never, technically right now, everyone's looking at a dick pic of me <laughs> right now based on measurement. I'm giving, I'm getting away with it fully and I'm admitting to it red-handed, blaringly. I'm being just a sick pup. Everyone's getting a dick pic of me right now because you're looking at a 7.5 centimeter object on screen. Now, of course, this is 26th century BC. It's been around a while much longer than my tiny dog. Um, but it's a small ivory statue of the Pharaoh Khufu. Um, and this portrait is legit. You know, he's got jacked shoulders, legit pecs, dude, square jaw, very masculine traits here. And I'm pointing that out for a reason because uh, in a little bit we're going to, you know, have a contrasting work. But... Um, well, his one hand's in his lap, so he's at the drill factory. I think... Aaron, great call, and you can't even see where it is. And... It's sad that that other hand is gone because there is symbolism in the way the hands are being held, like in Buddhist art, and you know if the offer, you know, hands offering up to the gods are down. So he could be very well be in the drill factory right now. That's a great call. He could or, be drilling himself in honor of Osiris, yeah, or, or taking a dump. I mean, the he's kind of gritting his he, teeth a little bit. Yeah, he's on the throne. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right, and. I'm glad you can see that facial expression, and it's huge because the head wasn't found with it. It was, it was gone, you know, in, in amount of time. And also something that should be noted, which is sad. So much of history is lost to either looters or just erosion, um, ch turn up politics from throughout the years of people, of other rulers destroying other art from other rulers, you know, because of political reasons or rivalry. But... What's so interesting about Egypt and why so much stuff is like, first of all, they did mummification, which is huge, which, um, you know, kept bodies intact and we could see them and it's really rad. We can capture DNA, but also the climate in the desert because it's so dry. Um, it does preserve the art much, much better. Like when you compare Egyptian art, you see the colors, a lot of like black, red, gold, green colors like that. But Greek frescoes and other stuff like you look you think of greek and everything's like oh it's all white or just like kind of tan looking those would have been painted back in the day but the paint's gone because the climate's mediterranean it's different it's not as well preserved as the egyptian desert can preserve stuff that's also why it's legit to have this history it's so friggin fucking i mean for lack of a better word it's, it's pretty baller um so but kufu is just legit dude um I like this this piece because he's in the um, uh, he, he's the guy who built the pyramids and it proved you know it's proof okay he's got this little tiny statue in there and it makes me think you know he built this large st structure but then just this small thing for himself so maybe he was a legit dude um, so just pretty freaking sick dude or it was like a posthumous slam that's true too someone could have been like, he could have been trying to build like one of those big ass Ramses the second statues along the Nile. And this was like a prototype for it from an artist and it never got made. And they're like, take this bitch. <laughs> Some other priest was like, take this, you bitch. I wonder what the Egyptian word for bitch was, dude. Dude, my, my fiance gave me the green light to say bitch to dudes who are being bitches, but I can't say it to ladies. Yeah. So I'm fired up on that. The next work that I have highlighted here is the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Books can be art, Aaron. Books. Oh. books can be art. And look at these depictions or actually illustrations in the book. And what we have here and one of the things like uh, the Book of the Dead is legit. I mean, if you've seen the mummy, you have Imhotep reciting it from it. You know, stuff like that. He brings back a Naksan Amun and it's fuck, it's freaking just some legit stuff. Um, and the ancient Egyptians knew this book as the Book of Coming Forth by Day. Um, a lot of, there's a huge belief in the afterworld in ancient Egypt, which is why we have mummification. Um, also, you have a lot of across cultures, Greek culture, uh, Egyptian culture, Eastern culture, just you have virtues, right? In the West, seven virtues, we, they'd be called something, some referred to as something else somewhere. But everyone has like, you know, don't lie, don't steal, have honor, uh, be loyal. Like these things exist across every culture, no one, unless there's like a group of people who are like huge, big pieces of shit. Like maybe just, I mean, maybe just dudes from NorCal. <laughs> kidding, dude. I'm kidding, dude. 
I take that back, NorCal Bros. You guys are tight, dude. You guys give us some pretty legit bands. Even though you guys do wear socks with sandals a lot. But you guys make driving Subarus chill. So you guys aren't that bad. I feel bad about saying that, dude. Maybe dudes from Colorado. Actually, no, dudes from Colorado are okay, too, though. You guys basically yeah. invented Yeti mugs. You made those tight. It made those acceptable to bring into the Red Rocks amphitheater and just fill those up with rosé for me and my dead guy's fiance. Um, anyway, dude, freaking Book of the Dead's legit. It's got a bunch of writings, a bunch of legit ass uh, illustrations, um, and some spells, dude. So that's where stuff gets going on with, you know, compilation of magic spells that assisted the deceased on their journey through the Western land, or they call it, you know, because the sun sets in the West, so that's where you go when you die in the West, rises in the East, right? Uh, there's a ton of gods, dude, monsters, snakes, all that type of stuff, dude. Um, astral, the spells are instructional. The Book of the Dead is meant to be read aloud by a priest or priestess. Um, so just basically... Um, you know, and depending on how much wealth you amassed in ancient Egypt, your tomb, like obviously kings have the most legit tombs, but also wealthy merchants or dudes could have sick ass tombs too. Um, what you see here, I think it's smaller somewhere, but okay. So you see this main priest priestess figure holding this little scale. And so basically what that scale is, um, it's from the book of the dead spell 125. Um, and the, Osiris is the God that, that, uh, is sitting in the chair here, potentially on his drill factory. And it looks like he's drilling himself with uh, some crow feathers, which means he's probably into tantalization just on the tip. That's probably how he works himself when drilling. So that's kind of cool. Imagine being able to drill yourself with feathers. It might be kind of nice. Um, so the deceased, whoever it is here, um, their heart is being presented on a scale and it's weighed against the feather of Mott who is a god symbolizing justice and truth. So if the heart equals the weight of the feather, he is allowed to pass into the next world. So if you've been a schmoll uh, and a shyster and like, you know, my freaking buddy EJ's cousin from Arizona, when we all met up at Havasu and he just basically, this was back in the day, he did everyone's cocaine and just decided to start pitching business ideas, ideas to us on a pontoon boat in delaying how many jump offs we could get. And we only had it rented for an hour. Um, you know, I think he was being unjust with all of our time. And I think that he would not pass this scale for the feather of Mott. So I think it's beautiful. I think there's a lot of things that still, you know, play into today. So ancient Egyptian religions, legit, dude, I forget the name of it. I think I, I mentioned it on the episode with, um, Imhotep, um, but pretty freaking badass. So definitely got to give a massive shout out to the Book of the Dead there, dude. Um, all right, dude, we got, we, we got three more works to go through here. Um, Aaron, I mean, I'm pretty fired up on this Egyptian art. Are you getting stoked on it? Do you have any questions at this point? No, I'm just trying to see the details of it, I guess. There's so but, much intricate detail. Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, admittedly so. It's a broad uh, painting, if you will, pun intended, what up? of even though we've just we've also done with sculpting here um of egyptian art but it's basically you know in in, in inserting us into the culture here okay you can like say during the same time period i would imagine you know this is 3000 bc you probably have a lot of state 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 sanctioned art dude you have to work for resources you know um, egypt was a, a slave holding culture you know if you were wealthy did you have the luxury to go and explore your own art and express yourself? How did you express yourself? Maybe you orate, you were an orator or talked about poems or read from books at parties. You know, sometimes they do that. Then those parties, I imagine the main mode of express, expression was lovemaking. That's also could be considered art. Maybe you would, people would do that. You, maybe you'd go to one of these palette ceremonies for the gods or an ancient sporting event. Like I mentioned, chess, checkers, these things were played in ancient Egypt. So, um, it's interesting to freaking check out uh, and just know that most of the stuff was in most of the stuff that we have was sanctioned by the state. We'll never know if there was a troubled teen, you know, if like Dozier's, you know, eighth son was like, Dozier doesn't pay attention to me. You know, like Ramsey's the 12th. 
and maybe he was a sick ass artist or like wanted to play bass, you know, on like whatever the version of a liar was in Egypt or something, you know, wanted to express himself and had a sick band and went to shows, you know, maybe that happened or didn't. I did know this, the ancient Egyptians drank and brewed a lot of beer. Sometimes people were paid in beer and that's tight as hell. Oh, wow. Um, so let's keep on cruising. Uh, but before we get to that next piece, just real quick, I want to uh, mention again and thank our sponsor, Upstart, dude. And look, it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt. And sometimes it can even be hard to ask for help. That's where Upstart comes in. Saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps toward financial independence. But the interest month after month can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. That's where Upstart comes in. And look, Getting on top of your finances is an important thing. You know, it's, it's part of eliminating debt is absolutely number one. You're not going to be the money you're going to make. You're then going to have be able to choose what you want to do with it. If you have debt, you got to pay that off before you can move on. So it just really it, it liberates you to go do and explore more that life has to offer. And financial freedom is <clears throat> is a true definition of freedom and especially um our society today so um it's it's legit and a very very important thing to get into so i'm fired up to have upstart as a sponsor and be able to spread the word to Dangtorians and beyond so um they they take into consideration uh factors like your income and your employment and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan you can check your rate in minutes for loans between one thousand to fifty thousand dollars without impacting your credit score that's huge so very very helpful Um, you can even receive fast funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan so they're here to help you uh so don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash dank that's upstart.com slash dank to check your rate today don't forget to use our url to let them know we sent you so Use that URL, dude, upstart.com slash dang. Loan amounts will be determined based upon your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash dank. All right, dude, let's go back to some art, bro. Astronomical ceiling, tomb of sentiment, 15th century BC. Very intricate. You get a lot of bros in Egyptian art, dude. There's a lot of bros, you know, doing the, you know, they have the famous song, Walk Like an Egyptian. They're not exactly doing that pose here. But Sentiment was an architect of the renowned pharaoh, Hathsphips II. So I'm saying that real wrong. Um, Aaron, I'm surprised you didn't say bless you after I made that noise. <laughs> um, so this is like a map of the freaking like a map of the stars and I'm fired up on this because I did ancient timekeeping methods and you have um, the stars here in these constellations decans which are the stars and you know when they would become visible in the sky determined months so we're looking back like you discover a piece of this and you go oh my this is an ancient timekeeping method it's on the ceiling of this guy's tomb this is legit uh, it's what calendars are based on today. I mean, we're, look, we're living on the same planet, the same cycle. It's moving at the same rate. Our, the ancients discovered it, and it's like just amazing to see this map that is then an artwork. And maps can double as a lot of things. I had maps as bed sheets. Um, you know, there's maps that can be cool works of art. You can get a hip map uh, of your town, and it can go in a coffee shop. So I like when maps and art intersect, and I also like when that plays with the cosmos. This would be something that if I was boning in a museum, I would like to bone standing up next to it, perhaps assuming um, one of the positions of one of the figures in this, and maybe even wearing an old school um, Egyptian style god hat. Look, I'm not a guy who's ever going to get invited to an orgy. You know, I'm I'm not a risky guy i thought i was i was about to disavow myself from wearing shorts forever but you know say my fiance and i we get you know decades into our relationship and we want to go to a a nice party where you know people will be enjoying you know chartreuserie and boning um i think it'd be cool if it had a theme i'm into theme parties 80s themes you know 
librarians and barbarians in my college days, seeing chicks, emo dicks, stuff like that. And I think it'd be cool, Egyptian god boning party. Would you do that, Aaron? Would you put on a head of... Is that blasphemous? Uh, Maybe it's blasphemous. I don't think anyone practices this religion yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't think they do. It might be uh, appropriation, but... Right. I don't know. I mean, nobody says that about Steve Martin. Yeah, exactly. He does King Tut. So. It's like, you know, there's a thing It's comedy. Is it too soon? It's definitely I not mean, too this soon. work came from 15th century B.C., which I think means you can bone continuously next to it. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm fired up on that. I mean, maybe you'd have to get the permission of sentiment in the Pharaoh whose tomb it's in. I suppose it would, if you did it by it because it's located in this tomb, it might be desecration. But if you have beautiful bone lovemaking by it, then that might be art as well. It might be art on yeah. art. And that's, that's tight. Anyway, very cool. Um, a for surprising fact about this is there's no Mars. All the planets are here, but for some reason Mars is absent. So the ancient alien dudes would have a field day with that. They would say, well, why would they make a home planet? They know where their home is. You know, confirmation bias. All right, we're moving on to the next work here, which is going to be, uh, I believe it's called Egyptian Warrior. And wait, how did this get in here? This is... Okay, okay, well, this is a Boris Vallejo work. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is from 1986, so we're really jumping here. My bad. Love it. Um, I must have just gotten lost in my other Egyptian art collection that I have. Um, but look, any day where a Boris Vallejo finds its way into an episode is, is clutch for me. I mean, you have a Sphinx-like structure here. Um, you know, very square-jawed. You have a jacked jacked Conan style dude defending this statue. So yeah, I think this falls in, you know, he's probably honoring this God. Maybe this is a, this dude with like a Jaguar head and a lizard tail. Who's also jacked, um, coming in here, probably saying, he's probably saying, Oh, I'm going to destroy. Maybe he's saying, Oh, I want to, maybe this is a dude trying to have a sex party, uh, too soon. This guy's built, you build the tomb while you're alive. So maybe this is the King who's super jacked defending his tomb saying, no, no, no. This is my drill factory. I'm going to stroke my my own dong with the with the hand of a mot, the wing of mot here, and you have to stay away. So yeah, it seems like this guy's probably just trying to go around and maybe whack off in his tomb, and and then it looks like this is his priestess here, and she's saying, "Look, this is a workspace. Get out of here." Um, who, who's giving me some Rosario Dawson vibes? Who's a very capable, and she is definitely fit. Like she looks like for sure. Like she could t teach a spin class and DJ very, very well. So that's what I'm seeing. Also, you know what I'm seeing, Aaron? Maybe this, I'm mistaken. This looks like is this is a female um, statue here. Am I seeing is the Conan's jacked thighs covering up a female breast here on the, on oh, the yeah. statue in the background? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's not his tomb then. Maybe it's just a god and he's saying, look, he, and he's doing a phrase like... Uh, uh, hand gesture like look I cast you away and it does look like this guy's kind of afraid He's right defending it, yeah. yeah what are you seeing when you when you look at this work you know I'm seeing a guy maybe maybe um, maybe the girl in the back is is a descendant of this god you could see that goddess, you know yeah. like, and so this guy's like hey like let's I don't know what this weird jaguar dude is doing um, but let's get let's let's uh Oak the schmoll, you know? Yeah. This, there's no question the Jaguar dude's definitely the schmoll of the piece, even though he has absolute ripped delts, which fires me up. And Jack, very, very jacked um, Rick Wilson's, which I think I've mentioned Rick Wilson's is a dude who we went to high school with who had jacked um, lower abs. Um, and so I call that muscle group Rick Wilson. I don't like the Jaguar guy's sword. Yeah, I don't like that sword. I don't like the bent style sword. It lets it lets us know he comes from. I like Conan's sword more, kind of a a broad sword type, mm -hmm. Excalibur looking thing. This jaguar dude has more of like a saber. Although, in the movie Thirteenth Warrior, it's pretty badass when Antonio Banderas' character does have that 
bent blade and it's kind of legit and he does a good job against the saber yeah this is a beautiful piece to look at oil on canvas 1986 this is something that you definitely should you know how people have pictures of loved ones in their cars so they don't speed this is something that I would put in my car on the visor so I look down and I just see this instead of when I look in the mirror and I just see this and I go this lets me know that I'm what I'm standing for is the right thing and what I'm driving for and driving towards is the right thing even though it's like to the dental appointment because you can't give up dude even when someone's on the altar of what you deem most valuable which is this statue with it with a dude that with a nice square jaw and breastplates if the threat is at your door you still keep on driving forward and look I don't know if that's exactly a crystal clear metaphor it's pretty little convoluted but here's the thing I got a lot of time in traffic to figure it out also if I boned I would pick that jaguar head <laughs> all right coming to our final piece and perhaps it's more of a period than it is a piece. It's the Amarna period art, 14th century BC. If you've been following along visually, um, and maybe this is a blessing in disguise to have these Conan figures who are very jacked, but realistically jacked, um, or at least in their depiction in detail. Um, Amarna period art is very, very easy to, to pick out because you have Egyptian figurines that look now, the, the elongation of the skull was maybe uh, something that was more in style, and people would kind of do that. They would wrap their heads when they were young and, and, and sort of make the skull go back. Like, that was more of the elites would do that. They liked that look. But that's not really the point. The point is, look at the bodies. They're not muscular. They're more realistic looking, and that is an indicator of a monoperiod art. You have this pharaoh Akhenaten who would show himself how he looked now what we're looking at here in this this uh, example are just two you know um upper class people maybe priestesses or something looks like they're having an intimate moment um they're they're more relaxed in this work whereas in you know classic egyptian works you have people like showing like a battle that they've won holding a sword or like excuse me or a bunch of fucking dudes um you doing the egyptian walk like gators from the Nile and they're like showing the harvest from that year and like it was a good economic year by that pharaoh or king um, this just looks like a more intimate moment um, and their movement looks more fluid not rigid um, and Akhenaten would show himself with a less than perfect body style um, and ancient artists would never do that like if you were putting yourself out as a king like you like what we see as Ramses, like that's not really what he looked like. That's just like what a prototypical, like what Egyptians wanted Jack dudes to look like. Like every, like today, like say Biden wanted to make a statue of himself. He would probably just be like, yeah, I want to look like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Build those rocks and just say that's what I look like. There was no photographs back then and any paintings that were commissioned were done by him. So people would be like, yeah. So what Ramses was Jack, dude. He had a sick ass, you know, long ass goatee, which is a look, look that I think should come back that basically now only exists from like dudes who still sell weed probably have that look. But uh, to, and only to high schoolers because weed, you can just buy your own on your own now. But I feel like dudes are rocking those full on like braided beards. So sick. Such a sick look, dude. Pharaohs and weed dealers. Um, Akhenaten showed himself in a, in a body that he had. And, uh, and they can kind of go back because the Pharaoh's tomb, uh, or excuse me, body is so well mummified within his tomb. They can sort of do DNA tests in like that. I didn't, I didn't choose the bust of Nefertiti, which is a very important work, but that comes from the Akhenaten period of art, um, period. And that's kind of what Nefertiti would have actually looked like. So that's, what's cool. You can kind of see what the ancients looked like and, and, um, it's just freaking dope, dude, and and it also lets us in lets us date this period of ancient Egypt um, after Akhenaten. Um, you know, he he went out of power. Um, you know, he passed away, and then the next pharaoh came in, and they went back to the 
he's like that he's like hey cool on knocking on and like way to be bold and honest and have integrity but like honestly dude i freaking i'm gonna go back to just looking jacked but also he went back to worshiping um the sun god ra whereas um akhenaten who's amenhotep the fourth he changed his name to akhenaten so he's really in honor of um the um the god aten a-t-e-n i forget what he was the god of but um he basically made him the main god of egypt and that kind of had some pushback you know um even though Aten's legit people were just kind of like nah dude we freaking want to still freaking rule worship amun ra the most dude um so a lot of iconography looking up um i think Aten also has to do with the sun i should have i should have looked up exactly what um Let's see, I can actually look that up. What is Amon Ra the god of, dude? Yeah, he's the god of the sun. Yeah. It's always the sun, God. <laughs> the Aten's the solar disk god. <laughs> Which is like the, the the sun, dude. The sun disk god. So Aten was like, nope, sun disk, dude. Um, in any case important artistic period to look at in fact later pharaohs he also made the temples smaller because he was like I think he really wanted change to happen faster but also he's like look it doesn't need to be as gaudy as the last temples doesn't need to be as big or grand but I think he wanted the temples to get built quicker as well so it's kind of smaller stones that wouldn't have required you know beasts or uh, ancient aliens to move uh, he freaking but then those di since those stones were a little bit smaller and they were made like I forget the exact length but it was like two palms rather than like literally being two tons and the size of like a horse um, he built like smaller structures but then later pharaohs would use his stones still painted and everything to fill like columns and foundational elements of temples and pyramids later um, and those are discovered in, in future ruins and it's cool. And they're actually preserved the best with the most color because they're within that, within the desert climate. And they're almost like mummified and they, they depicted more mundane scenes and, uh, rather than these grand scenes on temples. So just kind of a cool period of art in Egypt. And you might have, dude, maybe Akhenaten was that king who I was talking about, like Ramses the sec, like eighth or whatever, like he's a Metatep the fourth and Sounds like he was a little more artsy, dude. Sounds like maybe instead of ruling, he wanted to just go play bass in the sun, shirtless, facing the Nile. And what's wrong with that? Now, granted, he has responsibilities. Has to run a freaking empire. And he's like, dude, it's, that's my album. It's going to be called Empire of the Sun. Which is also a sick-ass movie. All right, dude, let's do a few cues then bone out. What do you think, Aaron? Let's do it. All right, dude. This is Q for the pod part four. Let's see what we got here, dude. What up, Strider? And of course, Aaron on the sticks, dude. Um, let's see. Can I request to see a bit of um, the young Strider Velcro spring, uh, spring break freak dance that caused his dick to swell? <clears throat> I'll let you pick the song to best reimburse yourself and the energy at the time. I'd appreciate seeing this. Never both heels on the ground at the same time. Move on the screen. Keep up the great content as always. World peace. Sunny, dude. Legend, bro. Okay, so he wants a little demonstration of that freak dance. Now, I don't have the song ready to rock right now, but I mean, you know, if I was freak dancing, it'd look like, you know, it's a visual app. Maybe you'd see, and I'm standing right now. Um, I just, you know, I'd probably get in more, an athletic stance, you know, hips back, you know, like your linebacker calling out plays and you got to call out areas of the dance floor and be able to ready to move. You know what I mean? Tell your boys and, you know, be able to give like quick heads up to, to some ladies on the dance floor, like heads up, meaning like you want to come dance or whatever, or you kind of cruise up. You kind of got to just get your own space going in this way. You know, you can't see the feet right now, but just trust me, dude. I never, I don't have two feet on the ground. Just trust me, dude two heels planted just trust me dude never be planted to be on the balls of your feet ready to move and right now i'm just sort of moving and you know if i was doing if when i was spring breaking you might hear some thong song dude you might hear some kevin little dude something like that dude honestly dude maybe some stamps sandstorm like ba -da 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 -da. 
da 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 and then when I hear that da 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 I'd be like just da 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 and I like to rub myself a little bit. I like to rub my hips a little Flex the tricep, you know, at one of my boys, let him know what's up. And then, you know, this is like obviously the lady would be freaking right here. But then I like to turn around a little bit, you know, and have a nice freak dancing experience back. But the part that did injure me was really when the bass started to hit hard, uh, when that beat drops and being in those board shorts and not realizing and having such a healthy buzz um, and dancing with a, a very gracious dance partner who uh, really, really backed it up. You know how they say, back that ass up? She really backed, backed it up right into my dink um, on the Velcro. And yeah. You know, scars tell a story. It was a very, very tiny one on my very, very tiny DPs. So it's a great question, dude. It's a great question. And, you know, hopefully while listening, you were able to really visualize that. It's me in the sun, healthy, fresh sunburn, puka shell necklace, dude, sun in, in the hair, bleach tips, turquoise, turquoise board shorts. I believe they were billabongs and just ready to rock and roll. All right, let's see. Let's do... Um, one here that's a suggestion dude here we got it what up strider a long time deck torian have listened to every episode since ep1 legend bro thank you i first like to say what up to the legend on the sticks aaron what up? he's a beast and i love that orangutan means he shares on instagram memes <laughs> hell yeah dude hey girl now to my question nothing gets me quite as stoked as trying new food some might classify me as a food tourist it's my favorite part of any vacation. So if you could eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner anywhere in the world with no money or time constraint, where would you eat each meal? Your only limitation is that you have to have already eaten there before. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Thanks for always raising my stuff. Wait, wait. You, is it you have to have already eaten there before? Okay. Okay, so I can't, like, imagine what it would be like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with... I'm going to say... These meals are being eaten on a different day because I'm going to go to town on each fucking meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, because I have a big ass breakfast somewhere, then I'm not going to have room for lunch or dinner, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, I'm going to imagine that I can be anywhere in the world and I'm just having that one big meal on that day. Um, so let's start with breakfast. And I'm a big fan of the Western breakfast. I lived in China for a few months, not dank breakfast. I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to be in fucking California, SoCal, San Clemente, breakfast burrito, A's burger, on the freaking cliffs, looking over trestles with my boys, dude, on a summer day in August after playing some volleyball, housing a dank-ass breakfast burrito, dude. dude. I mean, hometown, give me that for breakfast. I don't care. That's what's up, dude. What about you, Aaron, for breakfast? I mean, I can't argue with a breakfast burrito, certainly. Mm-hmm. Um... I had like a really good Western breakfast uh, at our hotel in Cambodia. Dude, they I love Western, Cambodia. They had a Western breakfast um, buffet. It's really good. I mean, obviously it was all American food, um, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hate on that. But but you're having that nice meal while also in, where were you, Siem Reap? No, it was in uh, Phnom Penh, it was Phnom Penh? The capital. Dope. I mean, yeah, that's fucking tight, dude. Having something you love, a little taste of home while abroad, kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on to lunch. This is a good-ass question, bro. Because mm -hmm. lunch and dinner can kind of be the same type of thing. You know what I want? I want to be in, like, maybe I want to have a lunch, and I'm not getting too crazy, trying to think of the places that I've been okay I'm switching it up I'm gonna save that one for dinner lunch I want to be in like Germany dude and I want to have a dank ass fucking like I had this lunch in Germany one time that was like this legit like I don't know if it was schnitzel or what it was but it was like meat 
but kind of in a stew. And then I want to have that with some freaking brewskers, dude, mm -hmm. some German brews. And that's exactly what I want, dude. And I want to do that in like maybe Munich and then probably see us and have be a, like a soccer game. Cool. House that. Mm -hmm. Go to town. Yeah. For lunch, I'm doing uh, fish and chips in London. Love that. I love that. It's so good. They give you a lot of it, but it's still not that filling. Oh, it's good. Mm. So good. Dinner for me. I want to be outside. Mm -hmm. I want to be in Italy. Mm -hmm. I want to be probably in what city? And I know it varies depending on what city you're in, but I want to be like atmosphere. I'm trying to think of cities I've been to in Italy because I want to say like just a cool coastal city, but I have to have been there. Mm -hmm. I've been to Venice. Mm -hmm. I've also been to Bari. Maybe Bari, because it has like a little, it's more Southern Italy and it's like by the coast. I think a dank ass Italian meal with a fucking steak, with the pasta, cheeses, the whole deal, the wine. I'm having the big old Italian meal. It's perfect weather. It's a summer night. And I'm just, you know, with my dank ass fiance and I'm eating that Italian meal. And Italian meal is my, you know, deserted island food cuisine. So I'm going that. Yeah. I'm going, I'm doing definitely, I'm going Florence. Okay, Florence. That was my second city I was going to choose. Uh, there was a great restaurant we went to where we had like a, well, Leah had this. I had a, a like a pasta with truffles in it. Oh, so Ooh. Good. But she had, what was better, was recommended to her, was it was cheese and apple slices in a tortellini. And Dude, that it, sounds amazing. It hit you like in multiple steps. And it was unbelievable. And then so light, uh, obviously, on top of all that. Dude, my dad guess fiance would like that because she's vegetarian. Really, she's pescatarian because we'll house some sushi sometimes. But, dude, that's something that she would get. And I'd go, ooh, let me get a bite. And then I'd go, hey, you want trade bites after? She's like, no, you've got you've got like a you know beef bolognese. I'd be like, yeah, but you can have some of the salt, like the noodle. She's <laughs> like, did you just want another bite of mine? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If we, I mean, we really should have just ordered more. We should have just swap plates and ordered more. A hundred percent, dude. So You're on vacay. And I agree with uh, Micah here. Um, dude, I love the cuisine. That's a huge part of the travel. You, what mm -hmm. do you do? You go, you look at something, you take it, you go to the beach or whatever, you do an outing or activity, but then you get the fucking food, baby. I want to go where the food's good. So I love that. You know, I, it's a great question that I have been there. Places I haven't been, I would want to get sushi in Japan. I'd want to get like, uh, yeah. you know, I want to go, dude, I, we talked about this on the last pod with, with JF um, from last week, like the Sri Lankan cuisine. Like I want to go to Sri Lanka with, with my coworker. I want to go, I want to go somewhere with a friend who's from somewhere and have him show me the places. Like mm -hmm. even I want to do that in the U.S. Like I want to go yeah. with freaking Luke to, to freaking Cincinnati. In New York, I want to get, where's the best pie? So uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I even had other cuisine in other places. Like I've had a lot of Indian food in Myanmar. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, bro. I had some um, of the best Italian food in Thailand. Yeah, I had uh, I had a lot. I had Indian food in in uh, London as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's large population there. Yeah. It's really good. Dude, great question. More think, stuff then, like that. And then I think for dessert, you got to, I mean, I'm staying in Florence and I'm having gelato. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll still have an Italian, a Spumoni, gelato, yeah. tiramisu, fucking whatever they got. That's what I love so much about Italian. And a fucking eclair. I leave the gun, take the cannoli, whatever you need. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. having. I feel bad leaving out Paris, but it's like, that's just walking around food. So like. That's what I mean. Like I almost did a breakfast crepe, but I like pancakes more here and I love breakfast burritos, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also Paris. You know, my my way I envision Paris is like a nice bottle of French wine and a sourdough bread or a baguette. Like, I mm -hmm. feel like it's a snacking city. Yeah, it is. I it's, snack. It's, it's You take it and walk. Yeah. So that's, didn't quite call it. Snacking, Paris. Yeah. Uh, fired up. Aaron, you're a legend. Guys, hope you, you, hopefully you enjoyed this, the broad strokes of our um, ancient Egyptian art here as we dive in. I want to do more Egypt stuff. There's so much to uncover. It's so legit. Um, and I'm fired up on ancient shit right now, dude. You know what I mean, dude? So, so sick, dude. I get, I get amped up on our ancestors, dude. That's why I like diving in the ocean, dude. Am I swimming in Julius Caesar's piss right now? If I'm in the Aegean or whatever, so that's stuff that I think about, you know? Uh, so I'm just stoked on that. Uh, questions, comments, suggestions, check out the Patreon, um, strider, Wilson, treasure, gmail.com. Freaking stay stoked. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Let
se 